and welcome everybody. Happy Earth Day. Welcome to today's Sustainability Hour. So my name is Zoe and I will take you on a journey of sustainability by sharing some easy tips uh, to make your 2021 more eco-friendly and more sustainable. So to kick off, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So um, after having worked for over 15 years in a dirty fashion industry, um, I worked for a beautiful company, Ted Baker, managed retail stores all over Ireland, UK, Northern Ireland, France, Singapore, Germany. I've sort of uh, seen firsthand the effects of fashion on our planet. Um, although we had a great uh, sustainability team and everything, there's still a little bit that didn't click with me. So I've decided to completely um, transform uh, my life and dedicate uh, my new career to sustainability. So I run two businesses. Platform 61 is a restaurant um, on South William Street in Dublin. Um, if you haven't been, come and see us once we reopen. Um, it was actually the first restaurant in Ireland that banned plastic straws and takeaway coffee cups back in 2016. So back then, nobody really talked about the plastic pollution and um, plastic single use straws were in every single drink and every single cocktail. And we um, kicked off our sustainability back then with the ban on plastic straws. We adapted a campaign that started in America and had a very interesting hashtag. It was um, stop sucking. So we thought, OK, if you do something, let's do it with a bang. Customers reacted really well to it, and it was part of an education for ourselves and also um, our customers as well on how to live our lives a little bit um, more sustainably and um, less with less waste. Um, having sourced all of the alternative products for a platform, um, I find it quite, uh, found it quite difficult um, five or six years ago. So um, Adamame, my uh, second company, um, actually was born from the need to find more alternative solutions. So Adamame Eco now specializes in sustainable promotional products. I like to say that we're on a mission to disrupt and to fix the current corporate gifting market. Why, why is that so important? Because traditional promotional products company, um, the companies are incredibly wasteful. So when you get something at a product launch or, or a conference, you just kind of go through the bag, get a pen out and, you know, that's it. So almost every single thing is, you know, single use, made of plastic and doesn't really have the meaning. So we believe that companies that give away responsible products, um, long lasting gifts with a meaning, send a different message about their brand. So we um, prioritize sustainability throughout the entire process and all of our products are made from uh, things like bamboo, glass, stainless steel, silicon and paper. I'm going to show you some of the products just to give you an idea. So this, for example, is a bamboo coffee cup with a silicon sleeve. It's fantastic, super lightweight. You can put it in your bag, you know, top your coffee and Voila, uh, say no to single use coffee cups. This, for example, is a stainless steel water bottle. We do loads of these um, for um, schools and colleges. For example, we would put like a little um, um, white space so students can sign their names and they don't lose it. Um, there's different types of these bottles with, you know, different um, sort of tops and stuff. Very easy to carry. They actually keep your drink um, cold for 24 hours or warm for 12 hours. So they are super, super handy. Um, different things like a stainless, uh, sorry, a silicone bottle that can actually be squashed back into, you know, a teeny tiny bottle, put in your bag and uh, off you go. And bamboo, one of my favorite um, materials. We do loads of things like bamboo pens, branded for companies, bamboo sunglasses are super, super popular. So we work with businesses. Um, so we're a B2B business. Uh, everything can be branded, you know, for example, on the bamboo sunglasses just there and um, great uh, presents for your employees or your, um, or your um, business partners and, and so on. So this is actually a massive shift in the promotional products industry. And by making these changes, um, we believe that um, these will create long lasting effects for other businesses and for uh, the brands and also for the environment as well. So 
moving on uh, to our topic today, uh, Earth Day. Um, Earth Day is actually the anniversary of the birth of the modern environmental movement in the 70s. So its founder was a US uh, senator from Wisconsin. He was the first one that proposed the first nationwide environmental protest to um, shake up the, the political establish establishment and force this issue onto the national agenda. At that time, in the 70s, Americans were consuming enormous amounts of um, leaded gas and industry belched out smoke with very little fear of any legal consequences or bad press. Air pollution was actually commonly accepted as the smell of prosperity. Can you believe it? So um, on the 22nd of April in um, 1970, 20 million Americans took to the streets to demonstrate for a healthy, sustainable environment. Thousands of colleges and universities and groups uh, that were uh, fighting against oil spills, polluting factories, power plants, uh, toxic dumps, they all took to the streets um, and uh, they organized protests against the deterioration of the environment. This first Earth Day led to the creation of the United States Environmental Protection Agency and the passage of the Clean Air, Clean Water and Endangered, Endangered Species Act. And in 1990, Earth Day went global, mobilizing over 200 million people in 141 countries and lifting the status of environmental issues onto the world stage. Um, it also gave the boost to recycling efforts worldwide and helped pave the way for the 1992 United Nations Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. So um, this year's theme is Restore Our Earth. So I would like to welcome you to this webinar today and we will introduce some easy tips for a greener, more sustainable 2021 to help us all restore our planet. These small changes will benefit you, your family and your businesses, and they are great for the planet too. We will highlight some of the environmental challenges that we face today, and then we'll uh, focus on the small wins so we can, uh, what we can do to help the planet. Um, so we will include the introduction into reusable products with focus on reuse before we re recycle, tips for re repair and upcycle and recycle, uh, reducing food waste, which is a huge thing, um, and then becoming greener by eating more plants, composting, using greener energy, and raising awareness about sustainability and uh, restoring Mother Earth. Um, if I can please ask you to um, jot down any of the questions you have throughout the presentation and I'll be more than happy to answer them at the end of it and connect with you if, uh, if we run out of, out of time. Um, so if you would like to find out anything uh, about any of these topics today, just please get in touch with me. So first and foremost, why is sustainability and um, today so important? Nature is uh, no longer unlimited and free. The world will see catastrophic effects of climate change if temperature continues to climb. These effects include extreme heat waves, severe droughts, mass extinctions, sea level rise, earthquakes, and uh, much more. We're actually on track to hit 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature rise by 2040. However, it's still possible to prevent the world from warming, but we need to cut the greenhouse emissions by 45% by 2030. And by 2050, we need to reduce emissions to zero. At the moment, humanity uses the equivalent of 1.7 planets to provide the resources necessary to produce goods and absorb waste. We don't have 1.7 planets. We only have one planet. There's no planet B. Plastic pollution can now be found on every beach in the world, from uh, busy tourist beaches to uninhabited tropical islands, as you can see on some of the pictures here. And scientists have discovered microplastic embedded deep in the Arctic ice. Um, these are some of the uh, disturbing facts, unfortunately. So 73% of all beach litter um, is plastic. So things like cigarette buds, bottle caps, food wrappers, grocery bags, plastic bottles. 
Yet 1 million uh, plastic bottles are bought around the world every single minute. And this number is set to increase by 20% by the end of the year. Each year, around 8 million metric tons of plastic enter the world's oceans. To put this into perspective, it's like dumping a rubbish truck full of plastic in the water every single minute. Plastic is one of my biggest pet hates. Um, so I, um, I talk about plastic a lot and single use plastic in particular. PVC, um, so plastic may contain BPA, flame retardants, lead and other chemicals that have been linked to cancer, cardiovascular diseases, type two diabetes and endocrine disruptors. The monomer used to manufacture PVC plastic, vinyl chloride, is a known cancinogen. So it really is a no brainer. We just have to stop with the use of uh, single use plastic. Did you know that the average plastic bag is used for 12 minutes and then it takes a thousand years to decompose? It actually never decomposes. It breaks down into small pieces of microplastic and it never goes away. Yet over the, five, over the past 50 years, world plastic production has doubled. So every single piece of plastic we have created will still, is still here and will still be here after we're gone. One in three fish caught for human consumption now contains plastic. I think everybody has seen this disturbing image of the great Pacific garbage patch. So, um, what, what is it? It's, it's basically a ginormous plastic soup made of confetti-like fragments of plastic. Um, it's, uh, the, the, uh, the Pacific Patch is halfway between Hawaii and California and it covers um, a surface that is of an approximate size of three times the size of France. Can you imagine the scale of that? It's estimated that it will double in the next 10 years if we don't change our ways. And um, if you ask, why don't we just clean it up? Well, it would actually take 67 ships one year to clean up less than 1% of Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, what's even more disturbing is now there are five of these garbage patches around the world. So streams the, uh, of water bring these patches together. So there's a North Atlantic patch, South Atlantic patch, the North Pacific patch, South Pacific patch, and the Indian Ocean patch. This is very, very disturbing and awful stats, um, awful pictures. Are there solutions to any of these overwhelming environmental issues? Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, you can all make a difference. Let's see some of the easy tips you could do to start making changes that will make a massive difference to uh, our planet. First of all, reusable products. So our motto should always be reuse, reuse, reuse before you recycle. Um, Investing in reusable products such as uh, some of the pictures and images you can see there, uh, reusable cups, reusable lunch boxes, coffee capsules, even rechargeable batteries, razors, upcycling things like glass jars um, and uh, bamboo toothpaste, uh, sorry, bamboo um, toothbrush, um, things like that. So always look out for these keywords here. Are they compostable? Are they biodegradable? Made of metal, glass, aluminium, stainless steel, wood, copper, cork, linen, organic cotton, plant fibers, and so on. So here are some of the examples of the reusable products that we recommend. So these are some of our low waste swaps. So low waste kitchen swaps, anything from jars, as I said, upcycle your jars fabric napkins, bowl covers, may instead of using the cling film, uh, opt for the natural bowl covers, such as um, beeswax wraps, for example, stainless steel and wooden bowls, uh, secondhand appliances are great, reusable containers, reusable mugs and bottles, um, glass options, any of the glass options, wooden, steel, utensils, tea infusers, and natural soaps and brushes. Here are some of the low waste bathroom swaps. Um, so 
mouthwash tabs and tablets instead of the uh the mouthwash uh, mouthwash um sorry uh toothpaste tablets uh biodegradable cotton swabs reusable menstrual cups um plastic free deodorant uh, package free soaps uh, safety razors all of these things are available on the market today and all of these things will um will be perfect alternatives for all of the uh, single use uh, stuff that we use in our kitchen and our bathrooms. I popped the link here for some of the um, local shops that uh, are fantastic in not only giving you advice on the reusable alternatives that we have on the market, they also provide you with all of these low waste uh, swaps. So Reusey, the co, uh, the kind a little green, sh uh, green shop, um, there's loads of uh, beautiful Irish brands that we can support and uh, make um, low waste uh, swaps uh, for the better future. Now, we're not saying that uh, you have to purge of all your plastic and throw everything out and just buy everything that's on the list. These swaps can happen eventually as you need uh, this stuff. So remember the living low waste is about conscious consuming, reducing and reusing what you already have. When something comes to the end of its life, opt for some of these options instead of uh, plastic if you are able to. It's not about striving for perfection, it's about creating habits that will last a lifetime. These words are the building blocks to a life with less waste, the earth that is green, the ocean that is blue, so just imagine what we can all accomplish if we work together. Another tip is repair and recycle. So to lower our consumption and to reduce waste, learn how to repair clothes and electrical items. Um, some great uh, websites here to give you tips on how to uh, repair um, common household items and even supply spare uh, spare parts too. So iFixit offers guidance on all of that. It's a great website, highly recommend it. And uh, another great company is the Dublin-based Zipyard. If you want to repair or upgrade any of your clothing, um, Zipyard are fantastic in offering advice and this service. Moving on to uh, one of my favorite topics and uh, my one of my biggest uh, biggest uh, passions in life, food. So, how to reduce food waste? Um, eating more plant based meals. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be every meal. You don't need to turn vegan straight away. Uh, but just eating less meat is one of the easiest way to reduce your carbon footprint. Food production accounts for one quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, and it takes up, takes up half of the planet's habitable surface. Meat and dairy specifically account for around 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And um, if the world is to meet its target of limiting global um, warming to well below two uh, degrees Celsius, some degree of diet shift will be necessary according to our scientists. In comparison to meat and dairy, uh, plant-based foods have much smaller carbon footprint. Uh, on average, emissions from plant-based foods are 10 to 50% smaller than from those of animal products. So to, to, to put this into perspective, over the course of the whole year, just um, saying no to one steak per week and replacing it with uh, veggies, it will not only improve your health, but also it will count for around 270 kilos of carbon dioxide or, or two tanks full of gas for the normal kind of family car. Another great tip is to start composting. So if you have a garden or an outdoor space, um, composting is fantastic. Um, the, the biggest reason for this is that um, food that, an, that lands in the uh, landfill produces methane and contributes hugely to climate change. So composting at home is the most environmentally friendly way to dispose of kitchen and garden waste. 
Plus, you will be rewarded with an excellent soil improver for your garden. Composting can be done all year round. There's a great website offering uh, advice on how to compost uh, properly. You can invest in a bin that will retain some warmth and moisture uh, and make your compost better and more quickly. Or you can actually just compost on an open heap. Aim for about 25 to 50% uh, soft green materials, so like uh, grass clippings, annual weeds, um, vegetable kitchen uh, waste or manure to feed the microorganisms. And the remainder should be uh, woody brown material like um, paper, cardboard, uh, straw, dead leaves. The bacteria and microorganisms that produce the compost function best when the balance of the green and brown materials is correct. Um, the heap needs to be turned uh, to add air about once a month and um, gar garden compost can normally take anything between six months to two years to reach its maturity. Um, and it's, like I said, it's just fantastic for, for your garden. Reducing food waste um, can actually be a great little uh, saving scheme as well. It's been proven that uh, the average family of four um, can save just over 80 euros per month by reducing their food waste. Saving food means obviously saving money, but uh, it is great for the planet too, and it helps slow down global warming. The great website that I've just put on the slides there, it's called um, lovefoodwaste.com. It gives you guidance on how to reduce the chance of your food going off. So it basically offers anything from um, what to do with the spare apples that you have in the fridge, meat, uh, spinach, whatever, and what is the best way of preserving those. So I would like to focus on food waste a little bit more because um, it is one of the easiest ways to reduce your carbon footprint. And I just feel it's not really talked about enough. So um, I will share a short story of Matt, an urban harvester. So food waste problem is huge. Um, every year between 33 and 50% of all food produced is wasted. That is 1.2 to 2 trillion kilograms of food annually. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, little case study, we'll take the example of Denmark. Denmark has been named the most sustainable country in the world. So food waste in Denmark, um, consumers food waste. So at home, 5.8 million people in Denmark are responsible for 37% of annual food waste. That is 45 kilo of food waste per person per year. Uh, in comparison to that, supermarkets are also uh, wasting a lot of food. So um, Danish 2,700 supermarkets uh, waste on average 23% of uh, food, perfectly good food, every single year. Why? Well, because, um, you know, we need to make space on the shelves for the new food to arrive. So um, the food that is still perfectly good and within date will end in the um, in the bin. So this is Matt. Matt is an urban harvester. Uh, what does that mean? Well, he actually uh, started his story on Instagram in 2019. He is exposing supermarkets dirty secrets by visualizing all of this food waste from the supermarkets through his photography and showing just how much of this food is perfectly edible. So that is a dumpster diver. What is dumpster diving? It's basically salvaging um, clothing, furniture, food, or any similar items that are in perfectly good condition from large commercial, residential, or industrial or, or construction sites. So let's see some Matt's harvests in Copenhagen, as I said, the most sustainable city in the world. All of these harvests are done in his spare time by bicycle, in his three local supermarkets. So everything that you will see on these pictures um, is basically anything that he can fit in his backpack on his bicycle from only three local supermarkets. You can see the first photo there, perfectly good bread rolls. Within date, all of this food is within date. Eggs from only one harvest. Fruit, veg, eggs, 
bread from one harvest, meat, all perfectly packaged, there's nothing wrong with it, within date, just dumped because they needed space for new food to arrive. Asparagus, coffee, coffee that has probably not been produced in Denmark because Denmark doesn't produce coffee. So it's been flown. Uh, so the air miles in flowing, uh, in bringing all of that coffee over to Denmark and then just dumping it because they needed more space on the shelves. More meat, cat food, meat, plethora of everything. So bread, huge problem, fruit and veg, everyday problem more veg, more veg, 47 packs of biscuits. So when we talk biscuits, 47 packs of biscuits that have been wasted, it's not only biscuits, it's wheat, it's oil, it's, it's cream, it's sugar, it's, it's eggs, it's plastic and it's fossil fuels. All of this energy goes into production of biscuits to then uh, just dump it because they, don't longer, they no longer need it. Seasonal diving is another one of Matt's passions. So what happens after Easter? What happens after Christmas? Food that is um, just not um, labeled properly, I suppose, uh, just has the wrong uh, packaging, needs to be binned. So all of this milk, 57 cows worth of milk, has it was just binned just because it was past Christmas and uh, you know, uh, the supermarket needed uh, some space on the shelves. Candles with Santa's not appropriate anymore after the um, after Christmas. This huge problem, it's beef um, that was produced in Uruguay, almost 500 euros worth of beef that traveled 11 and a half thousand kilometers to Denmark to be just binned uh, because it didn't sell. So why is food waste so devastating? Obviously, the first thing is that we uh, talked about, uh, it produces methane if it ends in the landfill, but also human hunger, you know, we sometimes forget about it, but in 2019, 690 million people went hungry. So that's one in 11 people that suffer from severe food insecurity, yet we've been a third of all of the food that's been produced worldwide. If food waste were a country, it would be the third highest emitter of greenhouse gases after China and the US. So I'm going to actually uh, share a great story about food waste now. So this is a local business. Um, it's called Cream of the Crop Gelato. Um, Giselle, uh, pictured here, she is the owner uh, of the business. What Giselle does is she's partnered with um, a couple of uh, local supermarkets and uh, takes their surplus food that would normally end in the bin or in the landfill and makes delicious gelato. So um, she, all of her ingredients are basically rescued uh, surplus and imperfect ingredients. So fruit and veg that is perfectly good to be eaten and would uh, otherwise end in the landfill just because the supermarket bought too much or doesn't need it anymore. So, um, Giselle is fantastic because she is very creative with all of her flavors. She tries to use 100% of the product wherever she can. Um, one of the best selling products that she has is actually a tahini banana skin flavored uh, gelato. So wherever she can, she will use 100% of the product. So this is just one of the success stories that I think we really need to focus on and support um, and talk about more because uh, this is something that will reduce uh, food waste and uh, something that will reduce uh, our carbon emissions as well. So um, another tip on how to uh, become more sustainable in 2021 is to improve energy efficiency um, at home and at work. Um, there's two companies that I've put in here that offer fantastic advice on actions for any budget from PV panels to only boiling as much water as you need. 
So if you want to reduce your carbon emissions and keep your energy bills low, installing insulation or draft proofing uh, will reduce heat loss. Um, there are many simple yet effective ways to insulate your home, which can significantly, significantly reduce heat loss while lowering your heating bills as well. Um, if you are looking for quick wins around your home, these two websites are fantastic and they will offer advice uh, for any budget and um, to, to help you become more sustainable. If nothing else, just switching to a green tariff um, will demonstrate that there is a, there's the demand to move away from fossil fuels and to improve your energy efficiency at home. Finally, um, plant a tree and talk about it. So uh, the Chinese proverb says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Caring for trees and the environment is the social responsibility of every individual. Trees beautify our environment, but their values lie beyond the aesthetics. They remove carbon dioxide from atmosphere and increase biodiversity in our environment. They prevent uh, soil erosion and provide shade and lower the atmospheric temperature. There are uh, loads of great organizations out there, uh, such as, uh, for example, um, Garden City Fund that run a lot of uh, different plant a tree programs. So um, if you want to invest in this or um, gift a tree, uh, there's loads of uh, resources out there. And uh, finally, perhaps one of the most important actions that you can take to talk to others about the changes that you're making, um, it is just basically becoming a little bit more vocal. Our peers are some of the biggest influencers uh, on our behavior. And uh, just sharing your positive um, solutions or sharing your journey can have huge effects. Um, if you'd like to read more about how to share your experiences, uh, climateoutreach.org um, discusses on how to talk effectively and persuasively about climate change uh, with your family and your friends and, uh, and your workmates. Um, following on from these tips, if you are feeling inspired and want to share the changes that you are making or get any additional advice, um, I would like to invite you to get in touch with me, connect with me on social media, um, and let's just start the conversation. So in conclusion, we don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need billions of people doing it imperfectly. So these are just a few ways um, you can do to save our planet. It's not about doing everything. It's, it's, it's doing what you can and contribute in any way you can. Everyone's life and circumstances are different, which means the things that you are able to do will totally different from another person. However, if we all do our part and work together, we can help change the current state of the earth. Um, if we all stepped up to do our part and be mindful of our consumption, we can have a huge impact on our current situation. Um, of course, no one is perfect and you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to live a perfect zero waste lifestyle. Uh, sustainability is not this huge mountain that we will never climb. Um, but if we want our children and our children's children to have a place to live, we absolutely must start changing our ways. It can be as simple as bringing your own bag to the store or using a refillable uh, water bottle. There are many things that you can do to help the planet. We just need to implement them in our, daily, in our everyday life and they will become a habit rather than an afterthought. These new habits will shift the path from a disastrous one, from the pictures that we've seen, to one where we are most sustainable and live in harmony with the earth. So let's live every day like it's Earth Day and show our beautiful mother earth the appreciation that she deserves. Your planet needs you.